so you were saying that you could ask your shadow to come forward and you could meet your shadow and then you could also, you were saying merge with the shadow. Merge, yes, you can merge. Not necessarily merge, okay. because there's a different way to approach your shadow. Sometimes even just to have this accepting intention within you yeah. towards the shadow is already working. Okay. Because what is shadow? <laughs> shadow is this uh, this um, unaccepted yeah. part of us. Yeah. A part of us which we denied, which we didn't like, we didn't want to know about ourselves. We just suppressed it and it exists within us in the background, guiding our lives, but we are not aware of it. Yes. So through this process of uh, how Carl Jung uh, called individuation, we are, calm, we, we are coming in terms with our unwanted uh, aspects, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the nightmares, which are the representation of shadows, are actually this, uh, these aspects of us which are trying to come up Hmm. and say, hey, here I am, I am part of you, please don't deny me, I'm just here to tell you I'm here, please <laughs> Is that what a nightmare me. is? Is that that's, all? That's what okay. a nightmare basically most of the time is. Okay. It's just you trying to integrate the part of you which feels unwanted, um, wants to feel the part which deserves, which is you. Okay, so we are separating this from ourselves and this process of integration is the process of accepting this part of us. So sometimes even this intention of accepting mm -hmm. the shadow, accepting this, this thing which appears in front of us as our so-called shadow is enough. Mm -hmm. But if that's not enough, you can approach it with loving kindness and for example hug it. Mm. This is what a lot of uh, also writers about lucid dreaming and lucid dreaming teachers talks about. We can literally hug uh, <laughs> the thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not really pleasant, it looks like a monster or it's mm -hmm. a, some sleazy creepy thing and you don't really feel it, right? The same way as you feel about the parts of you which you don't want. Yes. But you are finding this courage and this space within you, this loving, accepting space to, to embrace it. Mm. And um, a lot of things happen. Sometimes it disappears, sometimes it comes into you, sometimes it's changing mm. so for something beautiful and start saying, I am the aspect of you which was suppressed because of this. And I'm not saying it says exactly as this, because sometimes it can be just symbolical. Mm -hmm. Or symbolic, how you say? Symbolic. Symbolic. Mm -hmm. Or it can just be a, a direct information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes it can just change and walk away. Mm -hmm. So it's, it really depends um, of the situation. It's really individual situation each time. Mm -hmm. um, so you can hug it, embrace it. You mm -hmm. can send uh, intention, loving intention, accepting intention. Um, you can talk to it. You can ask. What are you representing? Which part of me are you? Mm -hmm. And they can tell you. There's mm -hmm. lots of different things how you can work with your shadows. And they come up in our nightmares or in different situations in the dream. You can sense it by the fear they create in you or the negative emotion. Or you can go and look for it. And for example, they say dark places. <laughs> or you can call upon it. Please come. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is what you do. Okay, amazing. So you become more whole through the dream. Yeah. Each time. And usually I notice when I have a shadow work in my lucid dreams, I wake up much lighter. Huh. I wake up like some weight was just, you know, taken away from me. And I don't know if you have this sometimes. Sometimes you wake up, you're heavy. Yeah. Sometimes you wake up and you feel so light, like you can't describe it. Where is it coming from? No, I've never had that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really nice. <laughs> yeah, so this is what's happening when you have a shadow integration. You really wake up feeling mm. different. Okay. I would like that. That would be a nice change. <laughs> Can, you can come to my course. <laughs> Maybe I should. Yeah. I think I should. It's going to be in about three weeks, I guess. Okay. In Polish, because I'm Polish, <laughs> and in English as well. Yes, I'll be at the English-speaking one. <laughs> really? How come? Cool. What a surprise. You know Polish? No. <laughs> oh, you should learn that. Maybe in your lucid dream.
Yeah, maybe I could, you know, download the information like Like in did. Matrix. Yeah. Actually, this is how it works. When I watch film Matrix, this is what is how lucid dreaming works. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. You must have seen it's that nice. and been like, that's what I do! Yes, right? exactly. <laughs> and, and what I was saying, we talk about all these serious things, the healing, the shadow integration, but actually lucid dreaming is a great way to have fun. Mm-hmm. You can fly, you can try things you never try, you can jump from the mountains, you can go to different planets, you can visit your past lives even, or future lives. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, um, you know, we have our own individual psychology and also there is collective psychology, right? Mm -hmm. And there's also things beyond this collective psychology, right? Mm -hmm. So it's um, through lucid dream you somehow can access because Lucid dream states is really thin uh, border and uh, between different dimensions. So you can have experiences from, for example, you can have um, meetings with the beings from the higher dimensions entering your lucid dream. So, mm. so yeah. yeah, I actually wanted to bring that up as well. So I remember in conversations one on one, you did mention before that yes, you can meet beings, but um, it can be difficult to distinguish whether someone you meet in a dream is your projection, which is the case most of the time, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Uh, but then sometimes it is actually an other entity, an other being. So how can you make that distinction? It's easy. Okay. While you are hanging out in lucid dream for a while, you start seeing the difference. Okay. You start, start sensing the difference. But if I would portray this to you, you can see, do you see a difference between uh, interacting with a hologram and the real person? That's the tricky bit, isn't it? <laughs> Somehow this hologram can respond to you and stuff like that, but you sense there's something different, right, than, than the real person. I should hope so. <laughs> <laughs> really, have you seen a hologram like that, which you could not uh, differentiate from human being? No, no. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the question. So okay. this is this is similar. Okay. Similar thing. Most, as you said, most of our characters, dream characters, are some so somewhat um, thought form forms, some kind of maybe a representation of some ideas and beliefs we hold, or some emotional uh, material and stuff like that. Uh, some of them are even fighting with you. There's they having their own individual. Um, our director is talking something. <laughs> That's fine, right? Um, yeah, so some of them are even fighting because they claim they have their own individual uh, personality and they can even say or do something which is totally surprising to you or go against your will. So um, there are different types of characters. Um, but there is this so called 1% which they say this is the the thing which is outside of our own psychological uh, projections. And this could be uh, spiritual teachers, some kind of enlightened beings, uh, streams of higher consciousness which mm -hmm. can enter. The thing is that they can enter our dreams, but we cannot enter the dreams of others unless they are agreed for. Oh, unless is that the are, case? Yeah, okay. Unless we are on a higher level of consciousness or enlightened beings we can enter that otherwise uh, we need to have a permission I'm laughing always when I say this because it's like with the vampires you can only come in and <laughs> invite him home right if there's so, permission granted only yeah right. so I would wish that it, this is the case because you know I don't know everything yeah and there are some characters in the dream which I'm not sure about if they are higher beings or not Mm -hmm. so, but I definitely see the difference when somebody or something is real, mm -hmm. like feels real. Um, the way they speak is real. Their the sense of purpose is real. The logic, the the answers they give, the informations which I have no idea about, they which are real. You know, they they share. Mm -hmm. So they just feels different. And the way they respond to the, to the questions. Of course, we need to remember that the questions we ask are, you know, um, 
the influence on them have our expectations. So sometimes even the thought form can respond to you the way you would expect. So that we should be really like careful to judge. But I would say that um, if they have a good intention and they come in with loving kindness, then that's the good uh, kind of a um, way to, to, to as well recognize them as, as this one percent of beings. And they usually when they come, you know, you just know they have a message which really influence your life positively mm -hmm. and help you to resolve things. Mm -hmm. They're so-called guides. Mm -hmm. So you really see the difference uh, when you're around them. Okay. So also, I'm sorry if yeah. I find, uh, I notice if there are thought forms, I can easily change them. Uh -huh. I can easily kind of make them confused as well. <laughs> and what, when they are uh, the higher beings, they confuse me. I am the surprise one. Wow, this is a strong personality. This is strong energy which I'm not having influence on. And there's a one trick which uh, is known in the lucid dream world. If you want to make sure that this being which came to you is real, real, um, you can say, l please let the old thought forms disappear right now. And then you can the thought forms disappearing and the real beings, they stay. And that's how you can recognize as well. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. And um, so I find that um, when I had my quasi-lucid dreams or pre-lucid dreams, um, there was one instance where I almost had a full-on lucid dream, but the other character in my dream was asserting, no, this is real, this is not a dream. Distractors, yeah. So you call them distractors. Yes. Okay. So could you explain a bit about that? Yeah, it's a very common thing because when you are becoming conscious, then your ego is losing up a little bit because your ego basically has a lot of these uh, protection mechanisms and distract distractors are one of them. They basically try to keep you uh, in illusion, in, mm -hmm. you know, in the program. I would mm -hmm. say like there are some, somewhat like uh, agents in Matrix. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I had a dream about that actually, that I was actually, I forgot, I forgot about this movie Matrix, but I had a dream where I had agents um, following me and trying to make me unconscious or even kill me because I was conscious in the dream. It was it's a long story, mm -hmm. and I basically hide myself in a wall and I went up. And then when I watched Matrix after many years, I realized that they did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it works, but somehow in my psychology when I was doing it, I believe that they are not able to see me through the wall because they are in this dimension. Uh, so for them, this dimension is solid, but not for me. So for me, I could uh -huh. you know, go on a higher vibration, go into the wall and, and hide myself. Wow. While they couldn't. Wow. So I had a dream like that. So the similar thing is with these distractors. Basically, you know, when you are conscious, your ego can't have a power over you. Mm -hmm. You're the one who is seeing it. So your ego is no more in charge of your life. You're programming your... Uh, you know, conditioning is no more in charge of your life. So yeah, so we have a lot of distractors like that in this life and in our other dimensions which are trying to keep us in matrix. Mm -hmm. And this okay. is how it works. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, I wanted to move on to ask you about um, what, how would you describe the difference is between lucid dreaming and having an out-of-body experience? Okay, so, well, some people say there's no difference. <laughs> some people say there is. My personal experience is that there is a difference. And some people say that it's actually a different dimension, that when you are in out-of-body, you are uh, on more dense dimension than when you are in the lucid dreaming because uh, you are mm, the, the the astral world is more close to our 3d dimension while when you're in lucid dream you are more in a mental space where you can really um, you know manifest with in a speed of a top 
why when you are in astral world and you know out of body it's it's more difficult to change the reality in there mm. and um, from my experience it's like I have more out of bodies during the day than during the night when I have lucid dreams more during the night but I can have still consciously enter lucid dream during the day as well when I have after a nap but one of these basic things is that most out of body experiences are um, happening during the day than during the night uh, the entrance is different when you are going out of body you consciously coming out of body you can really sense this 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 feeling of coming out hmm. uh, while you are lucid dreaming you just realize you are dreaming so that's another difference you can sense some vibration in your body while you're coming up some people they report they they hear sounds you can't report i mean there was no reports known reports like that while you're lucid dreaming um, they say that when you come out of body, uh, come out of out of body experience, you can sense the feeling of coming back. Mm -hmm. In the lucid dream, you just realize you are, you just fading the consciousness. You just start believing it's a normal dream, or you just wake up, etc. Or you just change the dream, or just become unconscious. In out of body, you basically feel you coming back. So when you wake up out of um, out of body experience, you remember very well everything will happen with details, even the long experiences. In the lucid dream, is um, less likely you remember very long dreams and not so precisely. And sometimes you get confused about the chronology of this chronology of of lucid dreaming. What else I would say? Ah, uh, when I'm coming out of body. But maybe it's just me because there might be some people on a higher, I don't know, vibration when they can really easily, you know, travel in that in that world. For me, I feel I have a body more like I feel when I move, when I fly, I feel more like oh, it's it's more effort. It depends how much prana, how much life force I have within. So this depends on that. Well, when I'm in a lucid dream, I can easily uh, teleport myself with <laughs> one top <laughs> and I can manifest easily. And uh, so I really feel that the density is different for me personally. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's the thing. Okay. I actually wanted to bring up something I just remembered. Um, I talked with my mentor once about dreams and she said that she believes that some places actually that we go to in our dreams are actual places but they are of not the 3d realm i agree actually i had experiences like that okay and you can actually have these recurring dreams where you return to the same house yes. for example yes. and she said that her what's interesting also is that she said that her mother was also for years going to the same it was actually a house in this case mm -hmm. and they both went after years not knowing that they were dreaming of the same place one day they had this conversation and they were like the house looks like this right yes oh my god so they even described it the same way so so it seems that that is an actual realm at least in some cases when we're dreaming we do actually go to a place maybe not a physical place but it is a place that exists yeah, I would say that it's a great thing you said because I would forget to say <laughs> something. Uh, they say that um, when we are lucid dreaming, we are in the area of our own individual kind of a psychology. Mm. When we are in out of body experience, we are entering the collective mind. Oh. The collective psychology. So when you have this iceberg and you have the ocean, we say that the iceberg is our personal thing. And the, the the ocean is the collective uh, the collective mind, mm -hmm. and then we also have the space where everything is. <laughs> and I would agree that uh, I've been to places where they keep repeating like they they, they exist on different realms. I I had that ex experience. I also had experience of seeing um, being in three D and seeing things which I cannot see when I'm in a way it can stay so and I just know they are there hmm. and um, yeah 
Wow. Yeah. So cool. Also, I've heard or I've read somewhere there there are people who are practicing, you know, astral traveling and uh, they basically meeting they have places of meeting out of body somewhere so they meet they have like dates yes. they make appointments to meet yeah, other they people yeah they make appointments and yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah cool. they do and they are like i've heard that there are like uh, places which they are like exist there they know exactly where to go and where to meet and stuff like that amazing i haven't experienced anything like that i'm just saying what i've heard yeah right, right at this level of my knowledge so yeah, yeah but it's, okay. I, I found it very very interesting that is really interesting yeah. you, you can actually create places Cre you can on, definitely on create own. places and people have done uh, occult groups they would create like a, a temple space where all the members would go in and do their rituals and all that stuff and a yeah. lot of people have their own space for that same reason yeah. but yeah anyway mm. <laughs> That's Henry the director behind the camera today, <laughs> <laughs> chiming in with his occult um, exposure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to ask, because I know you do, you could do a whole course on this, and you are doing whole courses yeah, on and this. Yeah, I invite everyone. <laughs> yes, if you live in London, then I would definitely recommend taking a course with Malvina. Um, but... For those of us who just want to like dip our toes in, what are some, some tips we could start off with? Okay, first of all, you need to want it. <laughs> right. So you need to really feel, I really want to lose the dream. I really want to. I really, really do. And have that intention to do so. Because then when you want and you have that intention, you let your subconscious know. Mm -hmm. You are up for it. You put in your hand. Hey, I'm here. Thank you for being there all the time with me, helping me all these years. I'm here to meet you. I'm here. I'm ready for you to, to cooperate. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, because this is important to say, we are not the controllers of our dreams in the way that we are the, the, the kings and you know, masters of it. We cooperate. It's better to look at our subconscious and the lucid dreaming world as uh, our best friend, which with who we just, um, you know, interact, communicate and, you know, create, co-create because mm -hmm. there is a huge, uh, bigger than us intelligence running all this show mm. and we own the big respect and um, kindness towards it. Interesting. Because this is part of us and who we like to harm part of us and, you know, manipulate it. So we are more of a, they say, like a sailor in the sea. We can maybe understand the sea a little bit, but basically sea can any time, you know, make it tsunami and, you know, we are gone. Huh. Interesting. Okay. You've mentioned a few times that your subconscious is your best friend. Yeah, this, I love is, how, that. this is my approach. This is yeah. my approach because I've learned it three years and I... I, I really feel this way and mm -hmm. when I become friend with my subconscious I feel the support mm -hmm. and I feel open to receive it and my subconscious know when I'm ready to receive something when I'm not so this is like the safe part borders of lucid dream wow okay but what I was saying um, yeah. first of all you need to want it yes. you need to have the intention mm -hmm. And uh, then you need to do some practice during the day to create the habit of your mind which will be working while you're in a dream as well like a habit of recognizing if I'm dreaming or not mm -hmm. for example uh, looking around asking yourself a question am I dreaming like if this could become a mantra for you <laughs> then maybe spotting some weird things going on in your life and then asking yourself, am I dreaming? Mm -hmm. And when we do ask, it's not just like, a, you know, automatic, oh, am I dreaming, am I dreaming? No, you just really look around and just ask yourself, am I dreaming? And then when you ask yourself this question, you need to find, uh, you need to make a test if I am dreaming or not. So there are a few reality checks, so-called reality checks, which can help you to, to find out if you're really dreaming or not. And one of them is the famous Castaneda method. When you look at your hands, because when you are dreaming, when you look at your hands, they're 
changing because your brain does not reproduce uh, the image of this hand so quickly. Hmm. So you are just like looking at them. They that the fingers may miss or or whatever. They they definitely deformed or something or you can even have no hands if, if you will. So uh, this is one of the reality checks my personal reality checks which i've learned since i was a kid was to touch things if i know i can by will put my hand through the wall or through the couch or through myself then i know i'm dreaming if i can then but if i do reali reality check then definitely i'm dreaming because yeah. normally for my for me i don't really do much because i kind of annoy like after many years you start sensing this the difference when you are in this state waking state or when you dream is yeah. quite clear for you but to make sure i do this test I, I press or i put the finger through my hand to find out so reality checks you need to become more mindful watchful asking yourself the question am i dreaming of course to know that you are dreaming you, need, you have lucid dreams you need to remember dreams because if you don't remember dream, if you have 5,000 lucid dreams, you won't remember them, then what's the point, right? True. So the dream journal is really important to, to start to do. Basically wake up in the morning, try to not move much, recall the dream, write it down. And also a dream journal can show you your dream signs, the things which, for example, repeat, you can use. If next time this thing will, will appear in your dream, you will ask yourself the question, am I dreaming, you really to check and you're in it. So these things, what else I could recommend you? There is a, a lot of techniques which you do during the day, before going to sleep, also during the night, which can help you to, to lose your dream, which I'm talking about uh, on my course. Okay. So I think I don't want to talk too much about it, yeah. because you know, it's really a lot. So I think that's enough for, for today. Yeah. That. Yeah. Well, that definitely gives us a lot to work with. Just those few things to start, I think. So you mentioned that you're writing a book. And so it's about lucid dreaming. Is that right? Yes. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? <laughs> of course. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> well, so basically, as I mentioned uh, at first, I would like to tell people a little bit about my own story mm -hmm. just to make a picture of this that we all have this dreaming when we are kids most of us have but we lose it while we are growing up and we are in a process of socialization we lose a lot of abilities mm. and uh, our parents should be educated i believe so yeah to not discourage kids from losing these abilities because the, these are really important and really useful in our lives. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot I could talk about, a lucid dream about uh, the Tibetan Buddhism to it, or Toltec uh, approach, uh, you know, preparation for death, for conscious death even. So the ability of lucid dreaming is just incredible. So it's not only an um, inspiration for parents to encourage kids to pay attention to their dreams and lucid dreams and learn how to create because we are all creators of our projections and we can change our projections as well so it's a great education for the kids how to use their mind to, to create their own reality but also I would like to talk about the healing approach of lucid dreams the therapeutic approach which I wanted to write about in my thesis but I couldn't all those years before all yeah. those years <laughs> So now I, I, I wish to write about all these things, which um, how to use it to heal yourself, heal your mind, integrate your shadows, heal the illnesses, uh, the example of it. Right now I'm actually working with one cyclist, a uh, female cyclist, um, she's a championship winner in, in the world and stuff mm. like that. And I'm not going to say the name, this is my privacy. Okay. Okay. But she has um, the issue that she's scared of jumping. She, she's a mountain, mountain uh, um, cyclist. cyclist. Yes. Okay. Uh, on the run, she's just scared of it. So we want to work on that, so she could, in a lucid dream, create this moment 
mm -hmm. and just repeat it as many times as possible to habituate to that situation and see how it goes in real life because mm. I believe it can really change her her attitude towards that and make her a winner. So, uh, so for example, things like that, you know, or to resolve uh, issues with the people which passed away and we did not get in terms of accepting this. Mm. So there's another person I'm working with. So you can use lucid dreaming in so many beautiful ways, which I'm going to write about in the book. So wow. hopefully we'll come um, next year and yeah, welcome everyone to see <laughs> what it's all about. Sounds amazing. Thank you. Um, One minute left. Oh, one minute left. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I guess with the one minute we have left, um, would you tell us about the services that you're offering, including your courses? There's so many things you have, yeah. you're doing. Yeah, okay, so basically in about three weeks there's going to be Lucy Dreaming course in English and in Polish. I teach Hatha Yoga on Wednesdays in Acton Town, on Sundays in the park in Acton. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one, uh, intuitive life coaching, uh, which I use a lot of techniques in it. And, um, yeah, I mean, you're an amazingly intuitive woman, so I could definitely vouch, you know. I know her pretty well, <laughs> so thank I know you, she's thank you so amazing. Much. Thank yeah. you for having me, Ali. Thank really, you. It's really a pleasure for me. Yeah, and this was fascinating for me, and you've inspired me to, to get with the lucid dreaming. All right, thank you so much, thank everyone, so much. for watching. Bye.